Thank you very much. Um, excellencies, honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, on behalf of the government and people of Kenya, let me welcome all of you that have come to attend this very timely and important conference. And while there, let me give you one must know about Nairobi and one must know about Kenya. About Nairobi, to um, the south of this place, if you walk this direction in about five minutes, you will be at the Nairobi National Park. Nairobi is the only city with a national park a minute or minutes away from where you will be staying. So I will encourage you somewhere in between this conference to find your way to the national park. We have wild animals. I must, however, warn you that sometimes they break off from the fence. So if for any reason you find a lion, please be careful. They are not tamed. I must know about Kenya. When you came to Kenya, I am sure you realize that from wherever you came from, you no longer need a visa to visit Kenya. And it is because the artificial barriers that we have have since been brought down by technology. And that's why I am proud and honored to welcome all to the Connected Africa Summit 2024, at which we gather to inaugurate the sunrise of Africa's digital transformation, the spark which will ignite our continent's rapid development in every sector to accelerate Africa's progress in realizing its full economic potential. We are here to mobilize our shared dreams and ambitions, visions and strategies in order to pave pathways to our common future, a future designed and built by Africans for Africa. Today, we come together inspired by the shared vision of a continent whose thriving economy anchors global prosperity, driven by the full participation of every citizen, and where, through the relentless pursuit of innovation, integration, and efficiency, our digital economy comes the fundamental enabler of the aspirations of over a billion Africans. The primary ambition of this summit is that through determined collaboration and innovation, we will lay a sustained foundation of connectivity and empower the people of Africa to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals as well as the AU's Agenda 2063. We have quite some time and we have some way to go in order to, ready, to be ready for the digital economy and the future of work. Africa's internet penetration rate is 36%, which translates to 470 million users in a continent of 1.4 billion people. Current projections indicate that at the current pace of development, this number will increase by an additional 300 million people by 2030. Our continent is connected to the global internet through 19 undersea cables, which is comparatively modest compared to other continents. For example, Europe and Asia are connected by a significantly higher number of cable landings, leading to a greater broadband accessibility with profound impacts 
in terms of the strong positive relationship between digital connectivity and economic prosperity. Nevertheless, we must all be concerned by the fact that our rate of connectivity is poorer than the existing potential. Despite these connections, fixed broadband penetration in Africa is only about 5%, which leaves us far behind other regions of the globe. This has great critical implications for our ambition for both connectivity and economic transformation through the digital economy. The reason is that even an increase of only 10% of our broadband connectivity can lead to a 1.4% GDP, GDP growth in our continent. Additionally, our low rate of connectivity also presents other challenges. For instance, Africa's current average broadband speed stands at 8.1 .8, megabytes per second. And at 5% of the monthly gross national income per capita, data costs represent a significant expense and places connectivity beyond the reach of most, especially those who are vulnerable. These statistics must serve as an urgent call to action and motivate us to radically enhance Africa's digital infrastructure and unleash the immense economic and innovative potential of our young people in a vibrant continent. Ladies and gentlemen, our vision for the future is bold, clearly urgent and feasible. Under the African Continental Free Trade Area Framework, we aim to harness Pan-African integration in order to expand our collective GDP from US dollars 1.7 trillion to US dollars 2.5 trillion by 2030. This ambition must be complemented by a strong commitment to bridge the huge digital divide which undermines our continent's growth prospects. Today, 300 million people across Africa live more than 50 kilometers away from an active fiber optic connection, a yawning physical cup that denies them access to internet and separates them from all the possibilities that the digital economy presents. Globally, Africa's digital infrastructure coverage, access, and quality lag behind our other regions. Yet, it does not have to be this way because the most transformative interventions are just but a few decisions away. At the end of 2021, 84% of people in our region lived in areas where the third generation network technology, 3G connectivity, was available while 63% had access to G4 mobile coverage. However, regrettably, only 22% were using mobile internet services. This gap between coverage and usage is similarly large for broadband internet connectivity with 61% of people in our region living within broadband range, but unfortunately unable to use it. The imperative, therefore, is clear and entails determined interventions to significantly increase access to broadband services and to enhance both service, quality, and affordability. In turn, higher digital inclusion will intensify job creation and will help us deal with the challenge of poverty. Beyond infrastructure, a thriving digital economy requires the presence of a sizable and highly skilled digital workforce to build on advances in digital technology and to drive innovation and productivity, thereby creating a dynamic ecosystem which ushers enterprises into the digital economy and enables them to scale up successfully. With the establishment of these essential foundations, the private sector 
should automatically emerge as the primary driver across the spectrum of emerging transformative use cases. I am in full agreement with everyone here that at the heart of our digital transformation are our young talents, brilliant minds who are actively contributing to the growth of the global technology sector, marking out Africa as an indispensable hub of technological innovation. And I saw many of them as I went through the various booths. Driven by bold creativity and an indomitable entrepreneurial spirit, African youth are pioneering advances in fintech, agri-tech, renewable energy, and digital services. They are a generation which has been socialized to internalize technology as a basic need and way of life that is essential not only for economic growth, but also as a vital tool for solving the most pressing challenges of our time, including improving access to basic services like education, healthcare, and for facilitating sustainable resource management. I speak about young people in Kenya because I see the tremendous potential that exists. The youth are our fundamental constituency, both as, a principal, both as the principal builders and beneficiaries of a digitally enabled society where every African can thrive. This understanding is underlined by the theme of this summit, which provides us with a platform to amplify and accelerate the contributions of the youth through and throughout our continent. It is clear, therefore, that closing the digital divide is a priority in terms of enhancing connectivity, expanding the contribution of ICT sector to Africa's GDP, and driving overall GDP growth across all sectors. Africa's digital economy has immense potential, which is projected to reach US dollars 700 billion by 2050. This growth and projections in there is informed by a number of key positive factors, beginning with unfolding demographic dynamics. Briefly, our youth population, the youngest globally, is motivated and prepared to drive the digital economy, foster innovation, and entrench new technologies. As a country, we have made the very conscious decision that technology is going to inform the way we transform our country. We set out in the last one and a half years to put all digital, all government services on a digital platform. I am very happy that we are 80% on the way, making sure that every government service is available on the digital platform. And speaking about technology, it is amazing how technology can revolutionize and fast track our progress. And speaking about technology and what it can do to bring down barriers, in many of my country visits, I visited one Tibet. 400 kilometers from Nairobi. And I will give you an example about what internet connectivity, technology, and the youth, the connection, the power of that connection, what it can do for the transformation of our continent. I went to a Tibet in Kaiboi, in Nandi County. 400 kilometers away from Nairobi. And I met this young man, Brian. And Brian gave us his story, and he was sitting in front of a computer. And he said, after many things, 
that he takes two hours every day to work on his computer because he has digital skills and has been connected to a digital job. Brian, now in Nandi County, works for an AI company in Germany. Mind you, Brian is a village boy. He has never come to Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya. He doesn't have a passport. But he not only works for a company in Germany, he works for a company, an AI company, which the government of Kenya today does not even have a clear policy on AI. Meaning, Brian is ahead of the government of Kenya. And that is what the power of technology can do. In the last four months, again, if I give you another example of the power of technology and the digital space. In the last four months, we have distributed 2.5 million bags of fertilizer to close to half a million farmers in Kenya using an e voucher that has eliminated cartels, roadblocks, bottlenecks, and has made the distribution of fertilizer efficient. Because of the e voucher last year, which we used to distribute our fertilizer, and the efficiency it brought into our farming, we increased our production by 50% last year. Let me give you another example. I went to Embu, and that is why I was asking about Embu. And women in the market because we have a Wi-Fi, a free Wi-Fi in the market, we're talking about the efficiency of their business because they can now connect to their suppliers because the internet is available, it is stable, and it is free. That is how e-commerce can expand because of internet connectivity, because of technology. Let me also say how technology can expand our industrialization. Today in Kenya, we have a company that manufactures fiber. Today in Kenya, we have a company that assembles smartphones. Today in Kenya, we have a company that is beginning to put together technology gadgets, including computers. So there is an all array from creating jobs to enhancing commerce to powering industrialization. The second critical factor is the potential growth on account of increased digital penetration and an enhanced pace of infrastructure development. With over 160 million Africans gaining broadband access between 2019 and 2022, a 119% increase in internet users between 2016 and 2021, we have laid a solid foundation for the digital economy's expansion and built significant momentum for transformative economic growth. Consequently, we are poised to achieve exponential progress with further investments in expansion. And I'm very happy that we have many actors in our midst today so that they can work with us to unlock the huge potential that this space presents. Thirdly, the rise of the African fintech innovation can no longer be ignored. Our fintech sector is now firmly at the forefront of global innovation with its product 
transforming economic activities by facilitating inclusive service delivery, as well as interventions like mobile payments, thereby significantly advancing digital inclusion. I cannot forget to mention that huge positive role that international solidarity and regional support have also greatly contributed to the strength of the projected growth of Africa's digital economy. The World Bank's US dollars 2.8 billion investment in digital development projects, for example, enables African countries to surmount challenges in developing digital infrastructure and drive sustainable growth of safe, inclusive digital economies. And I say this in the context that next Monday, here in Nairobi, we will be having a conversation as leaders from Africa with the World Bank on the next IDA or International Development Association replenishment program because we are pushing the resource envelope on resources that have concessional funding to make sure that we can power our own development as Africans. For a long time, this conversation was done without us. For the first time, we are going to sit around the table, agree with our development partners, work with multilateral development banks to agree on Africa's priorities, what makes sense to us. And that conversation next Monday here in Nairobi involving Africa's African heads of state, the World Bank, and other actors is an important conversation realizing that it is as important to disburse as it is to disburse to the right priorities. More partnerships like this are essential for our digital and economic inclusion agenda, and besides, they are sound investments whose dividends will endure for generations to come. I wish to emphasize to the global community and especially financial institutions and private sector investors that betting on Africa's future now is the best investment decision with unprecedented immediate and long-term benefits. I wish somebody was listening to me. Any serious investor who does not have his focus in the African continent has some correction to make. In addition, we have developed our policy and regulatory frameworks into fundamental enablers of Africa's digital transformation through effective collaboration. That is why I'm very happy to have ministers in this meeting, because the biggest threat to Africa's progress is the fragmentation of our economy. And that is why we are effectively assembling ourselves into a coherent, cohesive, one market under the Africa continental free trade area. And the more we have functions like this, where we collaborate, where we bring our ideas together and synergize, the better it is for all of us collectively. As a consequence, harmonized ICT sector policies instituted both under the SEFTA and the Africa Union's Agenda 2063 play a crucial role in fostering cross-border coordination and investment, facilitating aggressive growth across all countries in all sectors. Also, ongoing efforts to accelerate Pan-African economic diversification and consumer market expansion further bolster the development of an expansive market for digital services as well. Through our commitment to invest in the development of broadband infrastructure and foster the emergence of a digitally enabled society, we shall lay down the foundation for an inclusive, prosperous African future where every citizen can thrive as an active participant in an interconnected global economy. This strategic focus is only about, it's not only about connectivity, but also about empowering every citizen in a dynamic digital landscape 
across our continent. I'm encouraged to note that the, in, in the intentional positioning of the ICT sector aligns with Africa's overarching economic growth strategy, which leverages the digital economy to catalyze the development of various sectors supported by Africa's phenomenal demographic dividend and deliberate infrastructure improvements, innovative fintech solutions, and strategic policy frameworks. The ICT sector is intended to drive Africa's transition into a global leader in the digital economic space. Kenya's sustained commitment to digital transformation provides a good example of what we should aim to achieve throughout Africa and to benefit everybody wherever we can deliver. At 64 million mobile connections, Kenya's mobile connectivity is 118% of our population. At the end of 2022, mobile data or internet subscriptions were 48, were 47.8 million, with 67% of this comprising mobile broadband connections. Our ICT sector has continued to grow at the rate of 10% annually. To build on this and all the achievements, sustain the growth in momentum and deepen ICT and digital inclusion, we have embedded last mile fiber connectivity as a strategy and a strategic pillar of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Under this vision, our goal is to connect 100,000 institutions and markets and significantly increase fixed broadband access from 1.2 million to 8 million out of the 12 million households between 2022 and 2030. Furthermore, we have commenced the process of reviewing our building codes to ensure all new buildings are fiber optic ready. These in initiatives underscore Kenya's dedication to deliver sustainable, universal digital access. We are implementing the National Citizen Digital Skills Program, a transformative initiative to bolster digital ICT inclusion in remote parts of our country. Through the DigiTrack program, for example, we have committed to provide 40 hours of digital skills and innovation training free of charge to citizens across the country, delivered through mobile units. An impressive outcome of this initiative is that over 35% of people who completed, have completed training went on to start new businesses, and 70% have since passed their digital skills onwards to other citizens. This is the impact of a simple intervention in terms of empowering young people, and it affirms the promise of a collaborative approach and the power of partnership in achieving ambitious goals. As we enhance our digital connectivity infrastructure, we are deliberate about fostering a robust environment for e-commerce. The objective is to broaden market access for Kenyan entrepreneurs and also integrate them into the global digital economy. Our ICT sector continues to expand on account of emerging technologies as well as our increasing sophistication in the digital economy. Increasingly, this is going to be the trend in every country on our continent. That is my belief. Accordingly, we see a great and urgent need to design and implement a harmonized model of regulation to be governed by a network of ICT authorities which shall oversee the integration of the digital transformation initiatives throughout the continent in accordance with our AU 2063 agenda for ICT. We are eager to share these experiences, and I'm sure um, Eliud Owalo and his team will take time to share some of these experiences and also learn from those of our colleagues from across the continent whatever they have to offer. It is 
by sharing knowledge and experiences, pooling resources, harmonizing strategies, aligning investments, and working as partners that we shall rise together. This collaborative spirit is what we need to transform Africa into a digitally empowered and economically thriving continent. It is also the reason we are gathered here as this inaugural Connected Africa Summit mobilizes all of us together with our esteemed global partners to collaborate with ambition and transcend our challenges, enabling Africa to rise towards its destiny. The expected outcomes of this summit, therefore, are not mere objectives, but concrete, impactful co uh, commitments and milestones on our journey towards innovative leadership and strategic global alliances that will expand our infrastructure, secure our digital spaces, and democratize access to technology, ensuring every African is included in our digital revolution. Everyone present here today recognizes the singular opportunity we have to unite our continent, inspire collaboration and innovation, and transform the ICT ecosystem, connectivity infrastructure, and our digital economy. The time has come for us to mobilize our collective visions, align our skills, focus our aspirations, and unite our energies in pursuit of Africa's digital intentions, economic transformation, and inclusive growth. Ladies and gentlemen, the Connected Africa Summit at this point is officially opened, and I thank you. Thank you, thank you, Your Excellency, for that wonderful